G'day. This is one of our bush poems that would have been possibly told around the campfire in the Middle East and during World War I. Banjo Patterson, the man from Iron Bark. It was the man from Iron Bark that struck the Sydney town. He wandered over street and park. He wandered up and down. He loitered here, he loitered there, till he was like to drop. Until in the end, in sheer despair, he sought a barber's shop. Here, shave my beard and whiskers off. I'll be a man of mark. I'll go and do a Sydney toff up home at Ironbark. The barber man was short and flash, as barbers mostly are. He wore a strike your fancy sash and smoked a huge cigar. He was a humorist of note and fond of repartee. He laid the odds and kept the tote, whatever that might be. And when he saw our friend arrive, he whispered, here's a lark, just watch me catch him all alive this man from Ironbark. There were some gilded youths that sat along the barber's wall. Their eyes were dull, their heads were flat, they had no brains at all. To them the barber gave the wink, his dexter eyelid shut. I'll make this bloomin' yokel think his bloomin' throat's been cut. And as he soaped and rubbed it in, he made a rude remark. I suppose those flats is pretty green up there at Iron Bark. A grunt was all reply he got. He shaved the bushman's chin, then made the water boiling hot and dropped the razor in. He raised his hand, his brow grew dark. He paused a while to gloat then ran the red-hot razor back across his victim's throat. Upon the newly shaven skin, it left a vivid mark. No doubt it fairly took him in, the man from Ironbark. He gave a wild upcountry yell, might wake the dead to hear. And though his throat, he knew full well, was cut from ear to ear, he struggled gamely to his feet and faced his murderous foe. You've done for me, you dog. I'm beat. One hit before I go. I only wish I had a knife, you blessed murderous shark. But you'll remember all your life, the man from Ironbark. He lifted up one hairy paw with one tremendous clout. He landed on the barber's chin and knocked the barber out. He set to work with nooth, he set to work with nail and tooth. He made the place a wreck. He grabbed the gr nearest gilded youth and tried to break his neck. And all the while he held his throat to save his vital spark. And murder, bloody murder, yelled the man from Iron Bark. A peeler man who heard the din came in to see the show. He tried to run the bushman in, but he refused to go. And when at last the barber spoke, he said, it was all in fun. It was just a harmless little joke. A trifle overdone. A joke, he cried, by George, that's fine. A lively sort of lark. I'd like to catch that murdering swine some night at Ironbark. And now, while round the shearing yard, the shearing, and now, while round the shearing yard, the listening shearers gape, he tells the story over and over and brags of his escape. Those barber chaps, what keep a tote, by George, I've had enough. One tried to cut my bloomin' throat, but thank the Lord it's tough. 
And whether he's believed or no, there's one thing to remark, that flowing beards are all the go up there in Ironbark. Cheers, Gobbers. Subscribe, you hear?